Welcome to the Sin Academy. You're probably here because you didn't want to take mine or Dejra's advice about using runic talons on your hybrid assassin. You might have found yourself some shit-ass claws and you're wondering, hey, I, I bet I could fit these into a Sin build. And to you, I say, welcome. Have a seat. There's a whole bunch of sins in Diablo 2. There's spider sins, trap sins, ghost sins, and sins against the father. Don't be caught committing the final one and making your assassin incorrectly. In this video, we're gonna check out all of the different things that you need to know about your specific assassin build and which claws to pick that might fit your style the best. You didn't pay a lot of money for this class, but it's gonna be well worth every dime. Before you decide on the claws that you want for your assassin, you need to first decide what type of assassin you are. Let's start with the trap sin, cause it's pretty simple. If you're a trap sin, there's only two breakpoints that you have to worry about, trap laying speed and faster cast rate. And I can imagine there's gonna be a lot of questions about plague, which is one of the new rune words. There's now an easy way to find plus five trap claws so a lot of people are probably wondering what the exact amount of increased attack speed that they need is on their build to hit the maximum uh, frames per attack breakpoint for a trapper with this claw. Now one of the reasons you're probably here is because you threw out my advice and you said I'm not going to use runic talents. I'm not going to be I'm not listening to you Cooley. But you know what? That's fine. I appreciate people like you. Let's start up with this exact claw base right here and uh, we'll explain how the Trapper IAS is broken down. These are feral claws. I'm going to jet over to the browser right here and if you do me a favor, if you're trying to follow along, click on the first link that you see in the description and you should see a page that pops up just like this. This is going to help us calculate our trap speed. So I'm going to go and click on feral claws here, which is what I have. These have a base IAS of negative 20 and the main claw for plague has 20 main hand IAS. Now when you are making a trapper, the only attack speed that matters on any of your weapons is your main hand and that's the one that's just over your glove so it's this one right here this is your main hand it is the only one that it gets calculated when your trap laying speed is in question but let's go ahead and look at what plague gives us for our frames per attack or our trap laying speed according to this chart you can see that with just this amount of ias we are pretty shy of the desired nine frame per attack breakpoint. This is why a lot of assassins don't use plague on their main hand. It just simply doesn't give you a lot of attack speed and there's a lot better option. In my opinion for a trapper, plague is a fine choice for your offhand because again, the IAS does not matter from that claw. So if you're a straight trapper and you wanna use plague, certainly put it on your offhand and try to find a better claw for your main because you can see here, we're already immediately two frames short. Now, one thing that you can take into consideration here is if you have 15 IAS in your helm, let's say, which is what I, I have on my build right here, we have uh, 15 IAS in our Griffins, then that will certainly put you at the next break point. You'll now be at 10 frames per attack and your, your trap lane speed will be a little bit faster, but you can still see that we're 28 IAS shy of the desired nine frame per attack break point. But let's say we got that, right? Let's say we had 50 IAS. Another thing that you have to worry about is when you get hit by somebody, you get slowed uh, you know, by 10%, which is pretty common from an item like Arachnid's Mesh, which in case you didn't know, that inherently has some slows target on it. Everybody's rocking that these days. If you get tagged by somebody like that, you're, you're immediately gonna lose some frames. We need even more IAS to, to hit the nine frame or to maintain the nine frame after we get tagged by somebody like that. This is why a lot of Trapsins will just prefer to use greater talents. The reason they do this is because you can see that the attack speed on this base is negative 30 or you know one of one of the fastest it's only matched by runic talons but the reason trappers use greater talons is just because of the stat requirements on those claws but let's say you had yourself some nice 540 greater talons or let's say you had a hybrid sin and you have some runic talons much like we talked about in the hybrid sin video this is ideal because you can see that all you need to hit the nine frames is two percent ias this can come from your helm or if you found magic claws for your trapper you could just slap a 15 percent ias jewel in there so let's say you did that and it puts you at 55 if you get slowed 
by 10%. Now you only need eight. You could just over stack and put two IAS claws, uh, two IAS jewels in there. Oops, that's supposed to be 70 with two jewels in there. You can see that when that's the case, we never have to worry about being slowed or anything. But because of all these little subtleties, this is why a lot of people, when they're running trappers, they'll run greater talons. I would highly suggest those. But if you happen to find plus five trap claws on some other base and you finally you want to make a trapper out of it, I would highly suggest using this table here, plugging in your specific base, how much IAS it has, and figuring it out. But just know if they're not runic talons or, or greater talons, you're probably going to need to make up your IAS somewhere else on your build. And that's going to inhibit you from hitting the next breakpoint that we'll talk about now. The other thing you have to ask yourself when you're running this sin is how fast do you want to cast? I don't mean lay traps. Those work on two different breakpoints. How fast do you want to teleport around the map? A lot of high-level competitive players will aim for the 102% faster cast breakpoint. If you're playing in very high-level competitive shit, I would, I would suggest going with that. So if you find plus five trap claws on a really shitty base, you basically pigeonhole yourself into hitting the 65% FCR breakpoint. Which, if you're playing casually, you're playing in pubs, you're playing with your friends... It's not entirely a bad breakpoint to hit. In fact, with this build that I just threw together, that's exactly what I hit. I go uh, for the 65 with these three items. I also have uh, a couple of rings. But this is something that you're going to always have to keep a keen eye on and to try to balance when you're building your assassin is bouncing back and forth between that 102% faster cast rate breakpoint and the 65. Your item choices, the claws that you have will indirectly affect what FCR breakpoint you can easily achieve. And I think this is a great segue into the Whirl Girl section, or basically any character that uses the Chaos Claw. So whether you're a spider sin and you're focusing predominantly on trap damage and just kind of mixing it up with uh, with whirlwind, either trying to cut your opponent open or poison them or what have you, or whether you're a full-blown ghost sin that's predominantly relying on whirlwind damage, you're going to be using the chaos claw. But when we start whirling, we introduce an entirely new breakpoint that we have to worry about into this build. And that is your whirlwind speed. Do me a favor, go if you want to follow along, go to the link in the description that says D2 IAS calculator. Click on that, and when you do, this should pop up right here. This is actually Warren's calculator that he put together. Big uh, big member of Llama's community and good guy. This is gonna be the tool right here that's going to help you determine what you can do with the claws that you found. And it will probably help you determine what types of damage you want to prioritize so i'm going to go ahead and plug in my assassin up here i'm going to click on whirlwind and you know what let's go into uh let's go into the game and and figure this out let's uh let's actually swap these out i'm going to put i'm going to put my plague claw on my offhand i'm going to put chaos runic talons on the main and in d2r the whirlwind speed is calculated by both weapons and your grand total of IAS all over your character. So the feral claws that we have on the other side are actually going to matter as well. Basically, it averages the two different speeds together. And the final table, when you have two claws, you're going to be looking at this final table over here. This is going to tell you how much IAS is needed to hit the frames per attack that's that's desirable for you. I would highly suggest that if you're going to prioritize whirlwind damage that you hit the 4 frames per attack breakpoint. In certain circumstances 5 is okay, but you just got to know that you losing that one frame is basically like reducing your damage by 25%, your damage per second. So in a lot of situations it it's most beneficial if you're going to prioritize whirlwind damage to hit 4 frames per attack. In our primary weapon, which was the Chaos Claw, we have 35 IAS in our secondary claw, which was plague, we have 20. So this right here says that if I want to hit that four frame break point, I'm going to need 19 IAS. Luckily for me, I use a High Lord's Wrath on this build in addition to the 15% IAS jewel in the helm. So just the 20% IAS on the High Lord's Wrath is good enough with these claws to get me to the four frame per attack break point. But there's also these cool things you can do down here and you can sort of mess with uh, your slow percent, if you're decrepified, if you're wholly freezed, wholly frozen. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can figure out. But let's see, for example, here, 
if we are slowed by that common 10% slow that you see on a lot of builds, that means with these Feral Claws and Runic Talons, I need a grand total of 38% IAS. So I'm just shy of that uh, if I get slowed by 10%. But the calculation that you have to make in your head is, is the damage that you're going to be doing by not using a Runic Talon, is it significant enough to lose that extra 25% uh, damage per second that you're giving up by not hitting a four frame breakpoint. So if your claws are super slow, you just got to ask yourself that is the added damage that we're getting from this worth losing that extra frame. If you are above five frames per attack, I can almost promise you it is not worth it. But depending on the damage for your claw and, you know, depending on your setup, it is okay to hit five frames per attack on your whirlwind, but you better make sure that it's worth it on your claw. For example, I have this War Fist in the stash, and uh, I'm just going to swap this out for testing purposes here. This is, I found this and I thought this was pretty cool. It's got amp damage, so when I start dragon clawing people, I can poss possibly proc that. I probably spent too many resources on such a shit claw here, but what we'll do is we'll plug this into this calculator to see exactly what my attacks look like. So I've got the Runic Talons on our main hand which was the chaos and you always want to put your faster claw on on your primary side when you're calculating this not necessarily because of your whirlwind speed but if you're at all laying traps or doing something like that it's that's that's why you want to have your faster claw there but let's scroll down to war fists uh and there's 45 IAS, I believe, on this. So you can see that just with that, I hit the five frame breakpoint. Uh, if I'm slowed by 10%, I'm at six frames. So this means that I'm almost certainly gonna want at least 25 IAS somewhere else on my build. And luckily for me, I have it. But this also means that if I go this route with my sin, I have to give up certain items to achieve this additional IAS. And that means you're probably going to have to give up the 102% FCR breakpoint. You're not going to be able to have that if you're going to have these high damage claws. You're, you can't expect to hit the max uh, IAS breakpoint for Whirlwind, especially after slow, and to hit the 102 cast. You're going to have to make some sacrifices if you're using these slower claws. Another thing that this site will allow you to do, and we'll sort of end on this note here, is that you can plug your burst of speed level uh, into this. So let's say you're going up against a Necro, which is probably what I would be using these claws for, uh, is just trying to Dragon Claw Necros, proc Amp, and, uh, and Whirlwind them. You can see that when I do that, uh, if I have burst of speed at level 20 and I have that activated, I immediately hit the four frames per attack. But if you're going up against the Necro, sometimes they use Clay Golem, right? So you're going to get slowed by 50%. In which case, if we're using Whirlwind, then I still hit five frames even after being slowed. So it's completely okay. But if I did want to maintain four frames per attack... I could stack up 64% IAS somewhere on my build and we should be completely fine. But when you're trying to figure out this, this new or additional breakpoint when you're mixing in Whirlwind with your Assassin, would highly suggest not only paying attention to your trap laying speed, but also going to this link right here and testing out your claw bases to see how many frames per attack you have on your whirlwind. This is a very basic crash course with this stuff, but I hope it helps. Special thanks to Dazer for sitting down with me and explaining this stuff here, and I hope that uh, collectively we can pass this knowledge on to you. And eventually, you can go around and slay yourself some necros, slay yourself some sorks, and if that is indeed your goal, I hope to see you in the DFC.